They're going to get there, aren't they? Of course they will. <laughs> it's the Lakers. Of course, they will. of course they will. They will figure it out. So, you know, enjoy the journey because uh, we'll be champions before you know it. And then we'll just be laughing at all the Warrior fans who all of a sudden can't out of right. nowhere. <laughs> Bandwagoners. Where did you come from? We were Jesse here. I didn't see, which by the way, I don't mean to dog the Warriors because they, they, you know, the owners are absolutely I know, amazing. I, know. I mean, the dog and Bob Myers is a good friend. But, great. <laughs> but I remember going there to play and looking around and seeing a lot of Laker jerseys in the stands. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm like, what? Reeves tries to take Curry behind his back, down the middle, foul, kind of it goes, and it goes. Austin Reeves making things happen. The Air foul ball grabbed by DiVincenzo, blocked by AD. Austin Reeves has got it. 50-footer, good! Austin Reeves, a 50-foot three, and the Lakers lead by 10 at the break. Lakers 56. <laughs> yeah what is cracking with you youtube cage tv back with another video and of course the mighty los angeles lakers in san francisco warriors Golden State Warriors, with Oakland Warriors, whatever you want to call them. You ain't going to see E-40 out of game no more. Ah. This squad has had a crazy year. Starting off 2-10. 0.3% of making the playoffs. Anthony Davis hurt, LeBron James hurt. Russell Westbrook on the team. Team just looking God awful. Trade deadline comes around. Rob Palenka pulls off an amazing trade for the ages. This trade is probably gonna go down as probably the best trade ever made in Laker history. Now, a lot of people talk about the Pau Gasol, uh, Kwame Booga Sugar Brown trade, um, but this one right here, this one takes the cake, especially if this team wins the championship. But just the fact that they took out the um, defending champ, the defending champs, champs, the Golden State Warriors. Says a lot about what this Laker team is capable of doing, man. Um, I was not expecting this, but now I am. Um, I think this team has the best chance of winning the championship this year. Um, but, you know, we still got Denver to get through. Um, that's not going to be an easy task, even though I think the Lakers will probably win that in six games. Um, I do believe if they get to the finals, it's probably going to be against either the. It's hard to say, man. It's hard to say. It's hard to say right now. It's hard to say because you have the Miami Heat, who is a bubble team that we beat in a, in a championship um, in Orlando year 2020. They're back in the mix. Um and then you got the 76ers and the Celtics. You know, it could be either one of those three teams, but I believe it's probably going to be between um, the 76ers and the Celtics. And that depends on what they do on Mother's Day when they play. Um, so they got their hands full tomorrow. But as of right now, the Lakers move on. We get some. We get a break. We, you know, Tuesday, it's right around the corner. That'll be the start of things to 
to get things kicked off. Um, you know, right now we need Anthony Davis and LeBron James to get as much rest as they possibly can get. Um, but let's get into this series of the Warriors and the Lakers because I've been seeing and hearing a lot of horseshit from all these LeBron James haters. Now, like I told y'all before, I'm not a LeBron James fan. I mean, I know y'all see his picture. I know y'all see his picture right there, but I'm not a LeBron James fan. I just don't hate the guy. He's a Laker. I got I root for the Lakers. He play on the Lakers team. So hey, I'm I'm roll, I'm rolling with Bron. Everywhere Bron has went, he has brought a championship. So I'm rolling with the dude that's that's bringing in the damn hard world with hardware with the Lakers right now. So let's get into this game. You know, when the Lakers took the first game from the Warriors. Oh, they calling all the fouls on the Warriors. They calling all the fouls on the Warriors. The Lakers went to the line all night. Yeah, they did. They went to the line all night. But when you play in a team like the Lakers that's dedicated to taking away or dedicated to attacking your weakness, which is driving to the basket against a small-ass team like the Warriors, you just do that. You do that. You, you, you take the advantage. So if the Lakers are going to the line, going to the free throw line the most, that must means that they are driving to the basket the most. Now, I'm not saying that the Warriors weren't driving to the basket. They were driving to the basket. But a lot of times they drove to the basket, they were trying to kick it out for a three. That's go look, go, go look at the game where LeBron James knew he read the, he read what they were gonna run. When Draymond passed the ball and he threw it straight to Anthony Davis, remember that game? Remember that play? Yeah, LeBron had that in his memory bank. He knew. He seen the setup. Like, oh, I know what play they're going to do. This team ain't changed. The Warriors have not evolved. Why aren't people talking about that? Yes, they won the championship doing the same shit that they always do. Chucking up three-pointers. Yeah, they did. They won four of them. They won last year. Yeah, they did. It worked. It worked. But the Warriors have not evolved. They, they continue to not get a big man in the, in the paint to help them out at all. Draymond has been playing center. As small as he is compared to Anthony Davis, that shit ain't going to work. Oh, the Lakers going to the line. They getting all the calls. Yes, because they're driving to the basket the most while the other team is chucking up 53 threes. So, yeah, there's going to be... You know, that's that's how things work. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers took advantage of what weakness the Warriors had. The Warriors are not big enough to defend the paint nor offensively get to the rim. Look at all the block shots Anthony Davis had. Look at all the block shots LeBron James had. And what's this other thing? Don't get mad at the Lakers because... The Warriors shot god awful from the three point line. Now, if they make those threes, oh yeah, this probably be going to a game seven. Straight up. Straight up. If they hit those threes that they shot against the Lakers in game six, straight up, this is going to seven games. I mean, combined between both Curry and Clay, it was like damn near 33 pointer shot. We ain't even talking about DiVincenzo, the ones he shot and made. We're not talking about the ones that Draymond Green shot. We're not talking about the ones that Wiggins shot. We specifically talking about the Splash Brothers. They shot a lot of threes, and they bricked a lot of threes. Oh, but when LeBron James make a three, oh, it's a magnet ball. They got a magnet in the rim. LeBron James shot horrible from the three-point line this, this, this series. He was only shooting, what, 30%? Now, I'm not saying that there's no inner workings above our pay, our pay grade in the NBA that's, you know, manipulating strings to ensure that the Lakers, you know, finagle their way into the finals. I'm not saying that that's not happening. We don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it ain't. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. And that's where I'm going to leave that at. But let's not sit up here 
and act like the Warriors didn't shoot their goddamn self out of the series. Because they did. Oh, oh well, y'all not, not watching basketball. We are watching basketball. At least I am. See, y'all don't know the game. Y'all don't know the game. Y'all just don't know. Y'all look at the highlights. Well, the highlights show that these motherfuckers was bricking. That's what the highlight showed. That's what the game showed. That these motherfuckers was bricking. I don't want to hear no excuses. The Lakers came and played more aggressive than them light-skinned motherfuckers. They just did. They imposed their will in the paint all six games. They live with the results. We not changing the style of basketball while we play. We know they going they, we know they gonna hit three pointers. We know they gonna do that. That's all they do. But if we could throw big bodies in front of them, contest their shots from the perimeter, make make them miss some. If if you if y'all paying attention to the game since y'all say y'all know the game, what was the Lakers doing to make the Warriors miss all the shots? They kept throwing two guys on both sides. When Curry went up, they had a dude right here and a dude right here, and they were just putting their hand up. That's all the Lakers was doing. They would just jump and try to contest it from both sides, squeezing Curry in so he had to change the direction and the angle of his shots. That's what happened since y'all. Y'all don't know the game. Was you, did y'all know the game? Give De Darvin Hand a golf clap. Beautiful defense. Beautiful defense. Darvin Ham knew. Look, they going to get looks at the rim. We just got to make sure we got the bodies to be in their way. Go look at the film. Every time Curry got double teamed and chucked up a shot, it was two Laker dudes with their hands up like this, right over them, like on both sides, on both sides of them, crowding his space. So he couldn't be free flowing with his form shooting the ball, man. Altering his fucking shot. We move on. <laughs> we move on. The show continues. The LA Lake show continues. So shout out to all the Laker fans out there that watch this game, watch this series. Watch the Lakers go out there and be a total uh, uh, be a complete total different team. A totally com complete just just a great team now. Well, I'm not going to say great. I'm going to just say a competitive team. We are a competitive team now. Now, we got Jokic next. We got Denver next. You know, um, I think, ah, you know, I, I wish it would have been KD. I was playing against KD and the Suns. But once again, you know, Chris Paul gets hurt. And... The Suns just can't can't get it done. DeAndre De, De, DeAndre Aiden set out the game. You got a KD that's playing with a sore ankle. He really didn't mesh with the team. Him and excuse me, him and Devin Booker trying to find out their dynamic as you know, you know, co-players on the court. You know where you like the ball at with your shot. You know how you how how you how you want to run the offense with just me and you, so we can coexist in the same space and still be efficient. You know what I'm saying? There was a whole lot going on. Monty Williams having a bad rapport with DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul. You know, you, you, you just got conflict over there on the sideline. Devin Booker getting into it with Ayton. Ayton walking off, sitting on the other side of the bench. You know, it just wouldn't look good economically for uh, the game the, the the game of basketball. You know, you, you want a full, complete team. You want to a team that's, that can be market, market, marketable. Um, and what better way than to have Jokic face off against LeBron James, last year's former MVP, uh, Jokic, um, facing off against this two-in team, rise out of the ashes type uh, uh, Lakers team that's, you know, clicking right now, playing good basketball, best team in defense, you know, LeBron, AD, and a supporting cast, D'Angelo Russell, you know, I, I, economically, it just sounds better than having a Suns team that's just completely falling apart. It probably would have been a sweep, uh, which would have altered how the NBA wants the scripted season to finish. If you don't believe it's scripted, go look at what John Sally said on Vlad TV. 
That's all I'm going to say right there. But back to this, you know, you want people to be able to watch the games. Of course, when the Lakers play at home, they're probably going to win every home game because that's what they've been doing so far. That's what the pattern has been so far. Um, I believe they're going to beat Denver in six. Um, it could go seven games depending on the surrounding and supporting cast. Surrounding players and supporting cast uh, 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 around Denver, I just think that the Lakers are too big for Jamal Murray to eat. To, for I mean, Jamal Murray is a crafty, a crafty guard. He got a bag. He got a he got a lot in his bag. Great feet, great feet work as far as when he playing isolation against uh against a defender. Um, and I think the Lakers are gonna have to be very very disciplined um, as far as be defending him because he he could get to the rim. He's crafty, you know what I mean. So we gotta watch out for Jamal Murray. You know what I mean. If he get going and Jokic is going, it's gonna be a pretty tough tough game. Um, but I would like to say that I will, I want to see Anthony Davis be dominant in this series against Jokic. This is a huge series for Anthony Davis. LeBron James, he going to be all right. LeBron James going to do LeBron James. Anthony Davis is who everybody going to have their eyes on going up against Jokic. And I think this is a great matchup for Anthony Davis to prove himself. You know what I'm saying? That he is one of the premier big men in the league, in the NBA, you know, a lot of people are questioning Anthony Davis being a Hall of Famer. A lot of people are. Now, I think he's a Hall of Famer because when you think of Hall of Fame, you think of total pro career, which includes college basketball and the NBA. Same thing with college football and the NFL. You know, all of that. It's all meshed together in one thing. What did they do in college? What made them significant enough to be drafted in the NFL from college? So they got to look at that. And what did Anthony Davis do in college? He won two NCAA championships. He's a three-time block 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 uh, shot champion. He uh, all-star all-star MVP. I think in 2006, 2007, 2016, 2017, and that was the year that they had the um all-star all-star game in uh, in New Orleans I remember that specifically because they all wanted Anthony Davis to win the all-star uh, the um, all-star MVP award so he got that um I forget how many all-stars he's made it to I think like six or seven he's on a he's on a 75th anniversary NBA team he made that so I don't understand why people don't think Anthony Davis, is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I get it. He's always injury prone, hasn't played, only only averaging playing around 62 games, hasn't played the whole season. That's understandable. I get it, you know, to each his own. But in my opinion, I believe Anthony Davis is a Hall of Famer just based off of how uh, the world of basketball will paint him and present him to us like he is a Hall of Famer. I mean, of course, they're going to bring up the bubble championship. And of course, what has the narrative been about the bubble championship? It's the hardest championship that's ever been won in NBA history. That's what the NBA is trying to create the bubble to be. So it means something. It means more. It was it, it was needed. We did need the bubble. We did need the bubble. I don't think everybody wanted to be tuning in every day watching riots happening, happening all day on TV. So we needed the bubble. So, yeah. Um and then you come into him with these injuries with the Lakers. A lot of people may say that he's only going to get in the Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame based off the fact that he won with LeBron James. Um, um, that's going to be one of the biggest, biggest. Uh, I think I think that's going to be one of the biggest, you know, negative marks on Anthony Davis resume as being a Hall of Famer is that, you know, he didn't win a championship on his own. Uh, he left to go play with LeBron James. He's a clutch sport client. You know, all of that is going to play into it. But we as fans, we are not the voters of the Hall of Fame. We're not. The media writers are. They are the ones who pick who goes to the Hall of Fame. And just based off of that, that's why I think Anthony Davis is going to get in to be a Hall of Famer. But, you know, Hey, y'all, y'all let me know 
Y'all let me know in the comments, is Anthony Davis a Hall of Famer? Y'all let me know. I mean, hey, some people say not. Jeff Van Gundy said he isn't. Some people say he, he hasn't done enough. Some people say the injuries. But I just think based off of his acc accolades and his collegiate career and coming into the NBA up until this point where he's at now, plus if he wins another championship, then I think the he is in a Hall of Famer talk will end, you know, if he has two championships. Um, but, yeah, man, the Lakers – they look good right now. They look good right now. I like what I'm seeing. Um, we still got eight more games to win before we host up the Larry O'Brien. Uh, the new the new Larry O'Brien trophy that they made this year, that they just made this year. Or did they make it when, um, did they make a new NBA trophy when Giannis won it? Or when the Warriors won it? I'm not sure. But as long as the Lakers get one of them, I'm cool with it. So with that being said, man, let's go Lakers, man. Let's go Lakers. And to all you Warriors fans, cry me a river because I don't give a damn what any of y'all got to say. Y'all lost. We put y'all out. We finally ended that bullshit with the Warriors. No more. No more. No more Warriors. We ain't got to sit here and watch them play another series. You watching the Lake Show. The Lake Show. Yeah. Okay, so I'll we'll take be there. Uh, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take a couple days, uh, but we will lock in on our assignments, and uh, we understand what they possess. I know what they possess, and uh, we'll be ready for it on Tuesday.